Hi guys, I've had a request to explain how you can find average velocity vectors and instantaneous velocity vectors and momentum vectors based on a motion diagram. So the idea of a motion diagram, of course, is you have a particle at one point in time, it's here, later it's here, later it's here, later it's here, later it's there. So this would be point one in time, point two, point three, point four, point five, like that. And then the question is, what's the average velocity? So, for example, if you want to know the average velocity between point 1 and 4, you'd want to draw a displacement vector from 1 to 4. This would be uh, delta r 1 to 4, something like that. And then, uh, so you calculate this as delta r 1 to 4 divided by delta t. 1 to 4, something along those lines. And of course, you'd end up with a velocity vector that points in that same direction. So the direction of the average velocity between 1 and 4 is going to be pointing in the direction from 1 to 4. Now, the instantaneous velocity vector is going to be tangent to the curve that connects these points continuously. So the particle you imagine as it moves along from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 is moving along a curve like this. The instantaneous velocity, say at point 2, is going to be tangent to that curve. So the instantaneous velocity is going to point along that tangent. That would be the instantaneous velocity at point 2. <coughs> the average velocity is always defined between two points that are a finite time difference apart. But the instantaneous velocity is defined in the limit as the t time difference goes to zero at a single point. So um, that's sort of the way that one works. Now then the question is, how do I deal with changing momentum? So if I reproduce that same basic picture, let's say I have um, points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I want to know the momentum change between two places. So let's see, I imagine the curve that connects these guys is some kind of thing like this, right? So the momentum at point 1 would be tangent to the graph at point 1. So that would be uh, momentum 1. Momentum 3, for example, would be tangent to the curve at point 3, so that would be momentum 3. And if we want to know the change in momentum between point 1 and point 3, we'd have to calculate that as a difference. So say P1 to 3 would be um, P3 minus P1, the difference in momentum between point 3 and point 1. And if you think about that, um, the momentum at point 3 looks kind of like that. The momentum at point 1 looks kind of like this. So this would be P3. This would be P1. And so the uh, P3 minus P1 would have to be this guy, delta P1, 2, 3, like that, going from 1, 2, 3. So you add momentum 1 and delta momentum 1 to 3 together to get momentum 3. In other words, using the same algebra, you'd say momentum 1 plus delta momentum from 1 to 3 is equal to momentum 3. Right? They have to add together that way. Let me say this a different way. Suppose I have an initial momentum, call it pi, and let's say we add a second momentum, a later time, that would be a P final. The notion is that I should be able to move this P final up to here to calculate the change in the momentum, which would be something like this, delta P. This is from initial to final. Okay, The initial momentum plus the change in momentum is equal to the final momentum. The final momentum is the initial momentum plus the change in momentum. That's the way it works pretty much all the time. I hope that helps.